Today we're going to explore the anatomy and kinesiology of your pulling muscles. So all the muscles that are involved, well, most of them anyway, at least the heavy hitters that are involved in pulling, we're gonna check those out, we're gonna take a little tour of the anatomy and we're gonna actually see these with a three-dimensional model in motion. So this app is pretty darn cool and we're gonna see these guys actually moving and look at some movements, exercises that incorporate these so that you can have a deeper understanding of the human body in motion during pulling activities. Let's check it out. Hey, real quick, my name is Anthony Davis. This is Shapeshift Wellness, where we explore the science of fitness, yoga, and meditation. If you like that sort of thing and you wanna really understand greater depth of anatomy as it relates to movement, please go to my website and check out my functional movement anatomy course. It is a full in-depth course that shows you and teaches you everything that a movement teacher, uh, a yoga teacher, or any kind of movement professional would need in order to guide safe and effective movement. So check that out. All right, let's learn about your pulling muscles. So originally this video was gonna be just the upper body pulling muscles, which are generally your um, you know, traps, your lats, your biceps, those types of things. But as I put the lats on here, I also, you know, I had a thought of, hey, let's also include the glutes because the glutes and the lats have a uh, sort of uh, continuous fibril connection that um, the fascia connects and they work together in a functional group that we would call the posterior oblique sling, or um, you can think of it like a myofascial train or meridian or sling or however you wanna think about it. The point is these two muscles function together. But, uh, well, it really it keeps going, right? It's not just the glutes that keep uh, working with the lats, it's also your hamstrings. So, okay, screw it. I want you to see how upper body pulling and lower body pulling are using continuous muscle groups, uh, kinetic chains or myofascial slings, however you want to think about it. And uh, let's explore the actual anatomy. So, so let's check this out. Let's start with the lats because I think the lats are one of the muscles that people first think of when they think about pulling. So your latissimus dorsi connects basically into your low back. It's a huge muscle. It moves all of these joints throughout your lower back, all of those vertebrae, and it connects through through this little connection up here on the front side, it wraps around to the front side of the shoulder. So let's look at some of the actions of the latissimus dorsi. So here, when the muscle turns yellow, it's contracting, and when it's not yellow, it's not contracting anymore, okay? So as it turns yellow, you can see that the arm moves backwards, and we would just call this extension. Um, extension of the glenohumeral joint, that's your shoulder joint, by the way, is considered pulling. So if I grab a door and I pull the door open, then I'm using my lats because I'm drawing my elbow back behind me, and that's using my lats, and that would be called shoulder extension. Now, another muscle that performs the same action is this um, uh, posterior aspect or the backside of your shoulder that we would call the posterior deltoid or the rear uh, deltoid muscle, and it's performing the exact same action. So uh, these muscles, and then also underneath here, I did not pull all of these muscles up, but muscles in the rotator cuff group are going to be active in stabilizing the shoulder joint throughout any kind of shoulder motion. So these are always going to be trained. They kind of go unmentioned a lot of times, and it leads to people thinking that you have to specifically train the rotator cuff with rotational exercises, but you do not have to do that. In order to strengthen the rotator cuff, all you have to do is strengthen the whole shoulder complex and, and throughout full ranges of motion and strengthening of any kind of shoulder exercises, you will be strengthening your rotator cuff anyway. So now let's look at your uh, biceps. So actually, you know what, let's, um, let's stay on the same track. Let's stay with the, the traps here. So if we look, especially at the middle traps um, and lower traps, we're really gonna see that they get uh, active with pulling, but let's just look at shoulder retraction. So this is to move your shoulder blade, your scapula, um, closer to your spine. So if we look here, when the muscle contracts, it's pulling the shoulder uh, to the spine. Boom, that's retraction. Here's neutral and then 
wait for it. So neutral and boom, retraction, okay? So that's pulling the shoulder blade back. So anytime, uh, if you've seen my videos on uh, scapulohumeral rhythm, anywhere the arm goes, the shoulder must also go. So if you reach forward, your shoulder blade has to move forward. That would be called protraction. If you reach backwards, the shoulder blade has to go backwards. That would be called retraction right there. That's retraction. So if we're pulling something, if we're grabbing a door handle and pulling it, where does my arm go? My arm goes backwards. So therefore, where does my shoulder have to go? It has to go backwards. So what are the muscles that do that? Boom, your trapezius muscles are gonna help out uh, a fair amount with that. However, underneath these trapezius muscles are some rather large muscles, but underneath you would see these guys. I had to put them on the left side of this model because otherwise they would be underneath these larger tra uh, trapezius muscles and you would not see them. So if you cut away the trapezius, you would see these little guys, these rhomboids, and they would perform that same action you can imagine. Look at the way that the fibers go. They basically connect directly horizontally um, and actually there, there is an angle, so it technically downward, uh, downwardly rotates as well. But the point is they basically go horizontal, which means it pulls when they contract, the fibers get shorter and therefore it pulls the shoulder blade to the spine. So those are gonna be also uh, strengthened in any kind of pulling activities. Now, um, to can you continue with this theme here of pulling, I do wanna uh, make a quick connection here in your brain that if we were to look at the fibers of the latissimus dorsi. They go up in this direction. And I want you to see that the fibers of the lats also happen to go in the same direction as the fibers of the opposite side gluteus maximus. So these fibers really act like one giant muscle. And in fact, you can see that if we sort of continue this line, they go down into the hamstring. So it's not, um, they're basically uh, just one line of tension uh, throughout the entire leg, all the way up through the mid back, uh, low, ba or low back up through the mid back, and then into the opposite side shoulder. So these muscles work together as one large unit. Now let's uh, look at the upper body again, and I want you to flip around to the opposite side to the biceps muscles, because these are also pulling muscles. What muscles do you strengthen when you do pull ups, you pull up, right? Uh, well, your biceps and your lats, mainly. That's mainly what you're trying to get strong when you do pull ups. So these biceps um, have a lot of complex functions as well, but mainly I want you to see that it performs um, elbow flexion. And so that is bending the elbow. And you would see that if you were to do uh, pull a door open, my arm starts straight and yes, my elbow goes back, but I don't keep my arm straight the whole time as I pull the door open. I bend my elbow as I pull the door open. So not only am I using my lats to draw my elbow back, but I'm also using my biceps to draw my wrist closer to my shoulder. So I'm performing this action and this action at the same time, okay? So uh, I want you to see that they work together even though the biceps are on the front side of the body, they help to synergize with the back side of the body in a pulling activity. So if we have uh, too many joints working at the same time, you would have to have joints on opposite sides of the body or opposite sides of the, you know, one link in the chain to the next link in the chain uh, that are helping to create that complex movement. So now if we continue to go down and we move down into the uh, lower body, our lower body pulling muscles would be um, your glutes and your hamstrings mainly. So if we look at your glutes, what do your glutes do? Well, they do a uh, squat. So here's a hip extension. So this is the person's left leg and you can see hip extension is when the leg goes backwards. Okay. So at the very, very top of a uh, squat, um, deadlift, because a squat would actually be a pushing activity. Um, it gets complicated there, but there's some a lot of crossover. But with a deadlift, which is a pulling activity, you would get to the top and you would give a little extra squeeze of the butt, and that would be putting yourself in a little bit of hyperextension. Now, what else is doing this? Your hamstrings are performing, oops, sorry, that's your IT band. Um, 
here we go. These guys, hamstrings, also performing the same action. So you have uh, these three guys, you technically have four because the biceps femoris has two heads, but basically these muscles right here are all gonna help to pull that leg back. So if we zoom back as well, you should also know that the gluteus maximus is involved in rotation. So if the uh, glute max is rotating as well, that means that when you're pulling, because it naturally wants to externally rotate you, you what you're gonna see is that the knee turns out. Okay, so if you're doing a deadlift, then you're you're not internally rotating the, the legs because one of the most important muscles in a deadlift is your butt, is your glutes, and they are external rotators. So as you do a deadlift, it's natural that your knees should want to go out to the side, okay? It's weird for people to get used to that, but it is a better use of your glutes um, to allow the knees to sort of torque out um, outwards. And your hamstrings, of course, perform the same, um, uh, the same extension type exercise or activity. So here we go, or action, I should say and they pull backwards. Now let's look at a couple of movements that incorporate these muscles. So here we are, we're looking at a deadlift, and I wish I could flip this person around to the backside so that you could see their glutes and their hamstrings, but uh, unfortunately this is what we're stuck with. And I just want you to see that Boom, when you're performing the action, when you're actually lifting this weight up, the hips straighten and the knees straighten. Um, but the hip straightening is where we're getting the pulling action. So the hip joint, as it extends right there, the uh, glutes and the hamstrings are firing to press the hip, um, or I should say pull the hips forward. Um, I should use the correct terminology, it is pulling. So they are pulling the hips forward, okay? So this would be a, lower body pulling activity, but I want you to see that even though this is considered a lower body pulling activity, this is also an upper body pulling activity, even though the arms are straight, because what do you have to do in order to hold that barbell stable in the shoulders? You have to use the rhomboids, traps, and lats and rear delts like crazy to tr prevent your shoulders from completely drifting forward, right? So you have to pull them back and pack them, or they say pack the lats. And that's fine. When you're doing a deadlift, uh, you should have a nice strong back and that involves your upper body. How do you hold on to the bar? You have to use your upper body to hold it. So it is a lower body exercise in your textbooks. However, you should realize that this is a really a lot of work for your upper body pulling muscles as well. Now let's look at a more specific upper body pulling activity. So if we look at the lats, and we look at a uh, typical strengthening pulling activity for the lats, we would see this. I was gonna show you a row, but actually a pull-up is a, a pretty good example uh, as well because that way you can see how the, the back side and the front side are actually working at the same time to perform this activity. And so this pulling activity, when the elbows bend, that's the biceps pulling the wrists closer to the shoulder joint, right? So the biceps bend the elbow there. But then what pulls the elbow down to the hip? So if you draw your elbow down to your um, side or try to put your elbow in your back pocket, that's gonna be your latissimus dorsal mainly, right? And then what's um, pulling the shoulders back as you get your chest up to the bar is mostly gonna be your traps and uh, your uh, rhomboids as well, right? And your rear delts. So I want you to see this would be a really classic upper body pulling activity. So I hope that seeing these muscles, seeing where they are on the body, see how they connect from upper body to lower body starts to get you thinking about how to train these in more creative and intelligent ways. And the opposite would be true for your pushing muscles. So generally speaking, when we talk about pulling, look at these muscles, right? Here's the front side of the body, not much on there for pulling, right? Here's the back side of the muscles right, uh, of the body. All, it's the back side of the body, that's your pulling uh, muscles, right? So when we train pulling, it's generally a back side of the body, sort of posterior chain strengthening activities. And there are tons of muscles that I left off that are getting strengthened in any kind of pulling activity. For example, all of the muscles that run up and down your spine, which there are tons of them that just go straight up and down or they basically form sort of like a truss system um, up and down the spine. Fine. 
All those muscles are getting strengthened in your pulling uh, activities, right? All these muscles all the way up in the C-spine that would connect from your shoulder blade to uh, your neck. Those kinds of muscles are going to get strengthened in pulling activities as well. So you might not think about it, but a pulling activity because of where the, the shoulder blade harnesses itself on the spine, actually. Um, and you can see that right here with the upper trap as an example. And, and uh, well, all the traps, really, they harness themselves on the spine. But pulling can be even a neck strengthening exercise uh, or pulling activities could irritate your neck if you are having problems there. So these connections can show you that, yeah, we think about a pulling activity as a lat exercise or a bicep exercise. But if you're not seeing these connections, you might not understand why you might be causing problems in your neck. Not, Or you can use the same activity with less weight and more, uh, more uh, volume, basically. To, uh, not that you should do this without consulting your doctor, but to rehab neck pain, as long as it's you know just musculoskeletal, uh, which your doctor can clear for you. But those kinds of things can be um, progressively overloaded with just pulling. You don't have to strengthen the neck specifically because sometimes for some people that's too much, that hurts, but you can get it indirectly because of these fascial connections. Because if you use, if you pull a door open, you are harnessing, anchoring, off of the neck to do it, right? And that's okay, that's a good thing. It means you get a strong neck, but it's just interesting to think about how this the body really works compared to the way that it works in a textbook, which is often very linear, very isolated, and that's not how the body really works. I hope you got something out of this uh, video. Thank you, leave comments if you've got questions, and I'll see you next time.